Hola everybody and welcome back to my channel. This is Paul, the plant parent, and I'm going to do a video on propagation for my peperomia because I love them so much. All right, um, what I'm going to do is these are three different varieties, I believe, of caparata. This one is Keto, this one is Napoli Nights, and this one is Shumi Red. Beautiful, look at these. These are just so cool looking. The colors, I don't know if you can see, colors are just incredible. So I'm gonna take leaf propagations from these guys and put them in my propagation cups that have sphagnum moss and a lid, and that's all there is to it. But I'm gonna show you how I like to take the cutting. So let's start with Keto here. Let me see where's a good, I want a healthy leaf, not a really old leaf. This one's kind of healthy. It's not too old. So I'm gonna take a cutting like this. Okay, so here is the leaf that we're working with. Um, there are different, so many different ways that you can propagate Peperomia. I'm gonna show you two of them that I like to use. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the petiole, which is the leaf stem, just a little shorter, okay, like that. And now you could just take this leaf and either stick it in water, stick it in sphagnum, stick it in soil, and wait for the roots to come out and the baby plants will usually come out from the cut end. But what I'm gonna do is double my pleasure, double my gum. I'm going to cut the leaf in half like that. And the cool thing about Peperomia, which is um, similar to African violets and probably a bunch of other plants, is where these, where these um, veins are on the leaf, each vein has the potential of creating a new little plantlet or, or more than one actually, depending. But, so this half of the leaf, I'm going to, I'm looking to get plants from as well as the other cut end from the petiole. All we have to do is take our sphagnum moss, moisten it down with some water, like so. Okay, not drowning in water, but just nice and moist and damp. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two of those leaves, just because not everything always takes, as you know. I'm taking an older leaf, but not too old. I don't want one that's really, really old and discolored. So I'm gonna take this one here. I'll show you in a second, guys. I'm sorry, I'm in the way. Look at these leaves, they're just so pretty. I just love the corrugated um, texture. And I love plants that grow in rosettes like that, just like succulents, they're really cool. Same thing with this one. I'm going to cut this petiole just a little shorter and I'm gonna cut the leaf in half, okay? Ta-da, here we go. So I'm going to now make sure this is damp enough. I believe it is. So now I'm gonna take these guys that I cut in half, the top portion, and I'm going to just nestle it in the moss like that, okay? I don't want it to be completely buried because, you know, depending on how moist I left that soil could potentially cause some rot. Um, I'm going to do the other one as well over here on this side. I'm going to do them at the edge so we can see through the plastic exactly what's going on and just cover that with some moss. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'll put it all the way on the edge here. Ta -da! Okay and now these guys that I cut you just stick them in like these, petiole into the into the um, sphagnum moss, and this one as well. Okay, it's not neat, not so pretty, but that's all we need to do. Now, the reason why I use these cups, I'm gonna spray these one more time. The reason why I use these cups is because they have the lids to keep the humidity in, so I don't even have to worry about watering these guys. There's enough moisture in here to support the propagation. And that's all there is to it. So this works great with uh, all kinds of plants, by the way. So now I'm gonna take off some tape. I use masking tape these days in order to, um, to label my propagations. Only 
because it doesn't leave a lot of residue, at least some stickiness, some of the glue on the back, but it doesn't leave a lot. And see, I named it Keto. Keto. And I'm gonna put this on the cup like this. It's not affecting the light getting in. And we're done with that one. Okay, that's all there is to it. Bing, bang, boom. Next one we're gonna do Napoli Nights. This is such a beautiful plant. It's got this beautiful silver gray top and a beautiful red underneath, just like Rosso. Look at that. I don't know if you guys can see with the light the way that it is, but really pretty. This plant is so happy, it's blooming like crazy. Look at this, one, two, three. Three bloom stalks. Um, yeah, so that's that. Let me take some leaves off of this. Again, not the oldest leaves, but not the brand new ones. I wanna make sure they're mature enough to propagate. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Yeah, you can see better now, the red on the back. I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the caparata. I mean, with the keto, they're all caparata. And I'm going to put it in this cup of speck moss. Let me just moisten it down. This is so much fun, guys. <laughs> oh, God. Non-plant people think I'm crazy when I say how much fun I'm having when I do this. They're like, um, you're just kind of sticking things in moss. I'm like, yes, but to me, it's exciting. All right. So here we go. Cut the petiole a little bit shorter. And I'm going to cut this in half. Okay. Those are the two halves. Put these down, get another leaf. Because I want to get as much as I can out of these cuttings. Okay, I'll take this one. It's older, but it looks very supple and strong. It has a little bit of a um, watermark on it, but see like that? There's hard watermarks. Um, but it's very firm, very, I don't want to say plasticky, but it's very hydrated, most important part. I'm just going to rinse off that the water stains just take them off okay so here we are gonna do the same thing with this one cut the petiole short thing cut the leaf in half think and now we're going to do the same thing we did with the other one do i have enough water in there yes i do so start with the tops just stick it right in there okay Make sure that it's nestled in there because now I don't know if you guys can tell, but this sphagnum moss is not sopping wet. When you have it sopping wet, that'll just rot. <laughs> it's damp enough that it's going to keep the leaves hydrated, um, but also allow it to propagate itself. Because if this was completely, completely um, waterlogged, it would just be a recipe for disaster. As it is, some of these aren't going to take, you know, not every single leaf will propagate. Take this petiole into the to the um, sphagnum moss, and this one too, like that. Get in there. There you go. Okay, so we have one leaf, two leaf, three, four pieces of leaf actually. And now I cover this one, and then I'm gonna take my handy dandy masking tape, and I'm gonna put it on the cup, like that, okay? Okay, that's that one, and now, last but not least, I'm gonna do Shumi Red, and I love this plant so much that I'm gonna do two cups of Shumi Red. That's right, two cups. And since these leaves are kind of smaller than, um, than the others that we just uh, set up, I'm going to probably, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut the petiole off entirely like this, and I'm not going to use it for propagation. I'm just going to use the leaf without the petiole. Um, I find that leaves, this portion of the leaf, will propagate faster than using the petiole. I'm not sure why that is, but that's what I've noticed. So that's one leaf there. Let me get another one. I'm taking the damaged leaves because why keep them on the plant? if they don't look so good, you know what I mean, Jelly Bean? All right, here we go. Leaf number two, and see what else we got over here. Such a pretty plant, like these Peperomia are just so beautiful and they're so easy that I feel like everyone should have at least one in their house. At least one hundred, no, I'm kidding. Um, 
All right, let me cut this. Okay, third leaf and one more. I think we should be good after that last one. This last one here. Okay. This is another healthy one. I'm gonna cut the whole petiole off like that. Oh, little petiole didn't cut. There we go. All right, so we've got four pieces of leaf. You know what, let me take one more. Let me take one more. <laughs> I need one more. <laughs> I'm so afraid that like if they don't take, then I'll have nothing to show you guys, but usually it's not a problem, but you know, every once in a while there's an issue. So, okay, I'm gonna cut the petiole off of this one as well. All right. Ooh. And now we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. Just nestle them in. I don't have to go on the edge if I don't want this time because these are so small, they'll just nestle right in. I'll put two in this one. Okay, this was already damp, this sphagnum moss, so I didn't um, need to pre-moisten, but I am gonna spray it after, just because I wanna make sure that there is enough moisture for these guys to propagate. Okay, that's that one. There's this one. Oops, come on, get in there. Dee, 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 dee. Oh, God, I love plants, don't you? I know, me too. Okay, so here we go. These guys are done. As you can see, we got the leaves in there. I hope you can see it. I'm gonna just spray it a couple times. Same thing with this one, just has two. Spray it a couple times. I'm going to cover them. And the great thing about these propagation cups is you can reuse them over and over and over and over again until they just fall apart. And then you just recycle the plastic. Isn't that great? I also sell cuttings or young plants in these cups already. So they've been propagated here and then they come to your home, if you're in the United States, um, in, the, in the place that they were propagated and then you would just transplant them. Or you can keep them in there as long as you keep them watered well. So now on my masking tape, I'm going to write the shoe me red. So it is that's the first one. Dun, 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 dun. This goes here. Okay. And last but not least, one more shoe me red tag or tape. Okay, and I'm going to keep these guys in under lights, LED light, but not directly under the light because these are not highlight type plants, but I am gonna put them under uh, just a daylight LED light bulb. It's not a grow light, but it's a daylight bulb. They work, for me, they work better than even the, um, the specifically uh, for plant grow bulbs, the grow lights. So I'm gonna keep them just near the light, keep the top on. I will just check them and make sure that the sphagnum isn't drying up for any reason. Cause there is like, since these are like for drinks, there is a straw hole, but that's just enough for air circulation, enough that it won't get stale. The air won't get stale in there, but it will keep the humidity in there, which is perfect. So that's all there is to it propagating your caporata peperomia types. And, um, and you could do most peperomias this way, actually, because they uh, most, if not all, can be propagated via leaves. So, so that's it. If you have any questions about the caporata genus of peperomia, um, obviously these are not all of them. There are so many different cultivars, so many different varieties, but these are three of my favorites. And uh, yeah, and I wanna have more and more and more and more. I'm also gonna be, if you're in the United States, I'm also gonna be selling just leaf cuttings so that you guys can do this if you want um, with your own propagations. And I probably will have these cups available as well, maybe pre-filled with sphag sphagnum moss if that makes it easier for you guys or for anybody that's interested. And this way, um, we can all do this. So much fun, right? Okay, anyway, if you have any questions about peperomia, about propagation, um, just reach out. We'll talk as usual. 
Don't forget to like the video, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell, ding, if you want to be notified, and I will see you in the next video.